recognise as rather than a war just for the sheer effort of getting here. I had to walk half a mile across the car park with the gear twice, having done that painting already this morning. But hopefully, when the sun is out now, uh, it's going to be worthwhile. And let's have a go at a big canvas, a 36 inch, pushing myself again. I like to stretch myself on flying air. One chance in a lifetime. We only get these chances occasionally in life, don't we? So it's worth pushing ourselves to have that adventure. for that one. Push me, but it's been fun. Successful it is, but it could have been worse. Occasionally I come back and work on a painting later and I've decided to do that on this one, um, this one at Normanby Hall. And uh, I started this last spring, went out in plein air and painted it. Great uh, thing to do away from the plein air, I much prefer working in plein air, it's far more demanding and you see far more. Um, but pushing a big painting like this in the few hours I had. So I wasn't ever really satisfied. Let's take a look at how it was then. Beautiful scene to paint, and on the way down to the scene, I managed to find a, a yacht moored up and, and the mud flats on the Humber. Stopped there and painted that a short while, and did this scene, which is rather lovely. Then, having done that, continued to Normanby and uh, found this beautiful scene of daffodils, which had already taken some photographs on, so I knew where I was going to be painting. I had an idea. I set up to paint this big piece on plein air. And I'm going to let this painting and project lead into our next project, which is a scene on the river cruise in the cruise in France. Um, much more textural work and only a studio piece this time, but very different ways of working as you will see. So I'm showing you different ways of using acrylics here, both on plein air and in the studio, and using impasto techniques and layering up, working darks around the lights as I'm doing here, building the textures up. But on the next painting, I'm going to be working a lot more with texture, as I'll explain, with sponges and so on. Anyway, let's finish this one off now and do a bit more. So now I'm going to finish this one off now and do a bit, little bit more on it. I just want to do a bit more in the background in the greens here and things, and uh, we'll move on. I don't think it needs a lot more work. Just a little more vibrance here and there, perhaps. I'm using small filberts on this now. I've got a quarter-inch filbert that I've been using just to finish off the, the detailed work here. Um, I'd like to just work up a little bit more of the greens here, just a tad more of these very light greens just coming into the background as if the lights are just and it will link with the base a bit more too as if the buds are just starting to come out there and the painting that's full of light and sparkles and alive actually this light green might be rather fun playing amongst the branches up here very very light just coming in between and down straight from the blue greens back here a bit as well. Let's just make them a bit more vibrant against the yellows. So often amazed I had this touch of a few colours can make such a difference like this. I'm going to make these colours sing and get these lights against the darks here to bring these, these shapes out a bit. Even playing amongst these and between these warmer leaves, we'll put some cool to try and bring the warms out. Yeah, I'd like to use a bit more of this mid-violet too amongst it. To, again, it's going to allow me to play the colour against the yellow daffodils. So just playing even the darks against the lights here can make such a difference here. I'm just going to come back on the greens a bit now. Oh, there's too many daffodils in here. I want to just come in here and quieten them down just a little bit. So close to completing this now, and it's just playing on these various colours that are coming through here. Just making sure I've got enough 
five minutes going on. Take a very light pink and just cool light pink and just try that out. Get in amongst these daffs and see if that can give me a few. I'm going to come in with some very, very light cream here, white and lemon yellow. See if I can pick out some of these lovely bits of light against the cutting the tops of these daffodils here. Mix some cadmium orange, cadmium yellow with a little white. Just see if we can bring out the lights here more strongly into the foreground. Make the cools vibrate against the warms again. I think we're almost, I keep saying this, but I think we're almost there. Look at the sunlight on here a little bit. Take some raw sienna and yellow ochre and just feel the warms there a little bit. Not. You take that very light turquoise and some white. <coughs> Make a very, very light, very light turquoise. Let's see what that does up here. These pools. No. Actually, right up into here. In fact, there's little bits of light shining down through here. these lights in I might have to go back in with some more darks again. That's the thing to bring the lights out. Been looking at it so long now I'm starting not to see it. I need to take a step back I think soon and have a little break from it or start another one. I'm really trying to get this vibrance of the sun coming across these leaves and it's not easy. Back into the ultramarine again, see if I can get this little trusty colour working for me out here. I'll give a few more flowers back into it here, a little bit cleaner, not rather too much green going on there, I think. Right, well, I'm going to leave that one at that, and uh, otherwise, I think it'll become overworked. And we'll go on to the next big canvas now, then this landscape where I've got to choose between. Um, five different compositions I've made just putting figures in or without the figures at all. I'll show you those next, the photographs and the compositions, and let's hope I've made the right decision. I've drawn out the basic composition now. I think I will probably put the two figures here rather than there or there. But before I start this painting, what I want to show you now is that, uh, the use of the sponge roll that we're going to use at this time for making the whole background and light effects and covering the canvas of this landscape. But this technique of using the sponge roller can be used for exterior scenes, interior scenes, all sorts of different ways. I'm just going to show you a couple of previous paintings just briefly to show you the use of the sponge roller for a street scene, an exterior scene, an interior scene in a cafe and so on. Just to show you how versatile the sponge roller can be. We've just seen a painting done with brushes only, large and small brushes. Now we're going to see one that's done with the sponge roller and we're going to see one that's done with a big trowel, cement trowel and painting knives and all sorts. 
the versatility of the methods. But we're going to do this one entirely with the sponge roller and with brushes. And I can put one colour over another, so I can put this as an underpainting here. Just a little bit of the indications of these. Right, this painting you see here is a demonstration for Driffield Art Society, and it was done using a sponge roller and then using a big cement trowel and a painting knife and brushes. Oh, it changed the whole thing now, I suppose. Round brush, round hole, square brush, square holes. Why fight yourself? And this next painting you see here is one of the secret series of 2019-2020 um, where I'm using the sponge roller to start the whole painting off and then to complete the brushes. Ready to use my, color, my palette of paints, the new set just set out. Mixing palette, water, a few spare paints there, darks and lights, and my full set of both flats and filberts, the larger brushes, my rakes, sponge, painting knives and various tools that I might need to work on this painting. Before I start, just a reminder how we use the sponge rollers. Mix the paint with a heavier brush, usually an older brush, and then run the roller through the brush to get it off the brush and onto the canvas. Don't need much water with the paint, depending on the thinness, on fizzly, and the transparency you want. So we'll have a go at that, and uh, I want to start mixing up a golden green going on here. So I'm going to take a little bit of water, a little bit of yellow ochre in this case, maybe a touch of warmth into it from there, and a wee touch of green just to get me going. Now, when you first start the rollers off, they tend to be quite absorbent, so they take quite a bit of paint to get them going. And then, if we're working from our mid-tones to our darker tones, we don't have to actually keep washing them out. We can add colour to it as we go along. So there we are, rolling through that. A fairly thin mix at the moment because I want the drawing to show through. From there now to my painting. I'm going to look at the application of this in my picture. See where I want to have this colour just around here at the moment. I'm going to go right over where the lights are going, put the lights on afterwards. I can just see my drawing through this. I can always come back with acrylics and put light over dark or dark over light. Well, it seems I've almost reached a stage with the sponge roller. I'm using the brushes just for the moment. Now, do I need anything else? I was thinking the other day about more red in it, but have a little look and see. About these magentas, perhaps, here and there. So, let's call it a day at that and sign it, take a photograph, and uh, look to the next one in series. Well, the first one of this winter's secret series, then. Right, let's make a start then, and uh, before I actually work on the painting, you've just seen the techniques of how I can mix paint in the palette using the sponge roller over a brush and so on, um, and the way of actually applying and mixing the paint. Now I'm going to go straight into this painting, I'm not going to look at the palette again, I will discuss some of the colours as I paint and those which I'm using as I go through it, just to help you. We'll talk about the colour hues, the values of warms and cools in the background, and we think of the warmer colours in the foreground. So colour mixing, you see here then in the background we've got much cooler greens and a lighter um, tonal area as well. So it's leading us through this darker framework. I'm going to bring out the figures as a shaft of light coming through from here, just coming across and through this edge, uh, which isn't there now. These are superimposed figures as we've seen, showing you the different versions of this. So we've got cooler bluer greens to work in the background and these pinker greys working gradually through with our sponge roller um, to get these 
layers, these passageways of light. And then once I've got all of these effects of light in, I'm going to come back after you use the sponge roller to get the, the marks and the shapes right. I'm going to come gradually back in with texture of sponges and painting knives and all sorts. We'll have fun exploring and experimenting with textures as well on this one. Start off with a nice big brush to mix with, a little bit of water into the palette as you've seen. I'll take some emerald green here, some light emerald, a wee touch of lemon yellow just to make it a bit greener. Just to get it damp to start with, not be too wet, just to get it moving. Run, roll my roller through the paint as we've seen already, and then come up with this lovely pale, gentle colour here in the background, up through here. And we're going to get this mottled effect as this light comes up through, right round right through here, round the water, behind the branches. I'm going to bring Nick stronger as I can. I still see my drawing through here. It's another beautiful thing about working like this. It's not transparent, but it's just clear enough that we can see colours through. Already we can start to get the feeling of water and reflections. Put some more of that green back in there in a moment to reflect into this water. It's a bit bluer down there. But whatever it is, we've got to put it in. I don't know of any other way. You could do this with a brush, but it wouldn't be nearly as easy. And we'll gradually move towards the stronger greens. And we'll start to add in some emeralds and some with more yellow in it to start to get these more yellowy greens that are happening through here. I'm going to go over most of that because I'm going to bring lighter colours in back. I can put with acrylics across, I can put light backwards and forwards so I can go backwards like this into the, the darker colours and I can come forward again back into the light. You see now how these stronger, deeper colours are making more sense as I go on and add more of them into here. The texture. So very quickly I can establish these warm and cool greens and hues in the background here and the blues in where they're required too we've got the bluey greens, we've got the yellowy greens, we've got all these lovely beautiful colours to gradually find and bring out in here we bring some of these cooler blues and greens into, into here. I to eventually lose all this white canvas. As soon as I can lose the white canvas, I can start to work in individual areas more and really start to pull these colours out. And I start to go warmer as well. I'm going warmer with the, with the greens. is going to bring out the cooler colours amongst this. And lose all of this horrible light grainy canvas. Which unless I was going to put another coat of gesso or a white over it has to go. Let's start to get in some of our very deep cooler colours. We'll come down to a very deep blue now. We'll get into a black here and uh, really start to find some of these shadows. <laughs> all this ghosting, all this effect of light. I can see what I'm doing far more now. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for a minute and uh, let that dry off. I might do some more work with the roller, but I could start really with sponges and brushes now. Well, I've got the base coat on now, ready for the uh, rest of the textural work, the brush work and the sponge work. I could do a bit more with the rollers. I might do, we'll see. Um, but I really want now to get on with defining these, these textures and, and shapes, box stones, lights. Um, but there's our base coat done with the roller, so you can just get the idea of how the roller can be used for landscape as well.
pitch. Well, there we are, and you see how beautiful it is on the Petit Cruise. Um, this is just above the confluence where the, the Grand Cruise, the ordinary cruise, and the little, the little cruise, the Petit Cruise, join. Let's carry on with this then. We'll start working a bit more with the roller and then go on to the brushwork. These kind of hues and tones. And gradually build up so gently in this way. Well the next thing is to work in with smaller sponges and brushes. I think I'll work with the brushes first of all. I'm going to continue with my filberts for the moment uh, and come down to not, not the larger filbert but a smaller one and already start to work in some of the larger leaves and all of these various colours that are happening in the background. A little bit more with these textures too just to see what we start to get on these colours. straight away the difference between the texture from a brush and I start to pick up at hinting at the light and dark edges of these bits of rock. Loads of things to do, loads of work to do but that's, that's good fun to keep me occupied for the moment. I get bored rather easily and uh, this sort of painting certainly has me looking and watching and enjoying. Gradually building up these wonderful effects of these explosions of light that are coming through here. Just cascading leaves, cascading showers of sunlit leaves, and to build up the darker branches shortly as well. You feel the surface of the water this way. I've got the verticals, now I want to get the horizontals. The feeling of these reflections happening. Put these larger strokes in, the textural ones with the sponges are going to be much smaller.
But here we are on the third day now on it, and I've done the sponge work with the sponge roller. I've been working up with the brushes. Next I want to go on to doing some sponge work with the fine sea sponges, and uh, then we'll work back in with the big brushes again, start putting in all these very light and um, sunlit leaves and the warmer colours that will bring it forward and push these cooler ones right back. So we've got uh, dark against light, warm against cool, rough against smooth. So we've got the cool in the background, the warm in the foreground, we've got the dark against the light, we've got the rough and the smooth going on to get these various effects. In putting in uh, warmer colours in the foreground here, it's going to push that back even more. Right, what I'm going to do here is just take a little <coughs> deep green, some sap green and a little bit of uh, ultramarine, and I just want to work on these textures a little bit at the edges of these leaves and around here, just to you see the small amount of difference it can make, but that small amount just gives that bit of a little bit more rough against the smooth. We've got some very light, creamy areas going on, and some of these leaves drop into the Some of this I can do with the brush, some of it I can do with the sponge. Not only strong winds, but uh, rains as well now in this storm. Come on with a small filbert, and uh, we're using the sponging now. I'm going back to these lovely leaves here, and I want to start adding these nice warms amongst this, which I can really bring out these. Magenta, just to move off a little bit there, in that forward diffraction. Well, there we are then, nice big one again, meant for the cruise, meant for the market over there. Very pleasing piece, I think. I've taken it as far as I would have taken painting, in fact, this is more photographic than I normally ever go, but it's been pleasant just to take it right through to this stage and show a way that we can take the rollers right the way through into sponge techniques and brushes and there we go. I haven't uh, needed to use palette knife or painting knife on it. I think that's quite enough.